I'm Driss and this is Double O'Neill. After completing the stone back scene for the new section of the layout, I, for some time, had been pondering on what to tackle next. To continue with any of the area, I felt that the bridge should be thought through. With the next step decided, I looked into my options for the bridge section, which led me down the route of two choices. One choice was based on my feelings on how the finish of the laser cut bridge looked. I think it has always looked pleasant, but the reality is that it wasn't as realistic as I'd like. So I thought the first option would be to clad it. This is the easiest thing. Get the embossed plastic, put that over the top, job done. But I wasn't completely happy with all the shape. After having it for some time and looking at the logos come through, it was a bit short one side. I'd like some other kind of slabbed stones in different places, which I'd like to do. So that led me down the other option, which would leave that one alone and scratch build one. Well, why do this? I have a reason. The opportunity to immerse my time into a fresh project which would truly be my own was very attractive to me. To make the bridge to the dimensions that I was desiring is another big bonus, as constructing from new materials and developing my skills in painting. What do we have to consider after this point then? Well, we need to be inspired first and find out what looks right in my mind. The looks need to be fitting with what I've seen in real life too, but while we're doing this, I'm sure I'll miss some details, as we naturally do, but that can be added later on. Taking a look at films and pictures of bridges that I've taken on days out on heritage railways, I can generate an idea of, of what I'll go for. I've always enjoyed the look of the stone bridges. There's something impressive about them. Though the brick-built ones are mighty, I feel I'd like to have that aged stone look, though, over the, you know the brick. Options are when selecting what we could clad the structure with from well detailed paper sheets to embossed plastic or even handcrafted stonework carved carefully from a layer of dust clay. For me, to achieve a good result in a finish and knowing my skill set, I'll be using the embossed plastic sheet. I chose to use a mixture of wills as well as slater sheets. For these, I already had some in my collection of the slater sheets to hand and then picked up the wills sheets from tony's trains he had a very good selection of the plastic sheets so i picked up enough of the coarse stone packets to complete the project and with some spare we always need to make sure we don't run out for the main structure construction and other stonework details i could have chosen card which would have been fine but out of interest I chose to use Fomex after my time with Dan Everson from Tunnel Lane Model Railways. Dan had kindly shown me what a good modelling material choice it was, the way that you could build up the stone capping and other large stones due to its ability to have it scribed and hold a nice impression to emulate the stone slabs or whatever shape that you wish to make. With that figured out, I used CAD to make a template I chose to make a template as I wanted to make three pieces that were the same to create the arches. Also CAD was going to be used later to do the brick arch sections which I'll then be modelling. Making paper templates will be fine uh, for any of you that you're sketching out by hand, but there are other options for doing the arch details which are things by hand. One of the requirements of the design was to make it half a metre long before it was about a foot long, so we needed to add some each side. I adjusted the middle and back pieces to different heights as well, because that would allow me to have the road supported, as well as the inner wall, which would be next to an embankment, to be a little bit lower. To start the build, I laid my template onto the Fomex and carefully marked around it, making sure that I don't stretch or distort the paper as I do so. You can always pin it in place if your hands are a little shaky or that the paper slides too much for you. To cut through the Fomex takes three to four passes and this Fomex was three millimeter thick. If it's thicker, then it will take more. I recommend using the thinner Fomex. It saves time and it's more than enough. 
I found a sharp bladed Stanley knife, which worked well. I did start out with a scalpel, which I didn't have any disasters, but it felt like the blade was going to go and you couldn't lean on it too much. I made use of a self-healing cutting mat underneath to protect the table from unnecessary and unwanted scratches, with the arches and main sections cut out. I made additional square pieces to form the width of the bridge, which also created the structure, making sure that I didn't make too deep a section due to the possibility of longer coaches catching the inner arch sides on the curves. I checked my depth with the original bridge on my layout, as the curve begins immediately after the tunnel portal starts. So you can imagine where you have the curve going round. I can't then have a 120 millimeter deep section. It needs to be 60 millimeters. But I could, to protect the viewer seeing the other side of the railway to help with the illusion, I can add some curve pieces in later of black or whatever I need. Um, but that's something for a later date. Gluing it together, I opted to use a hot glue gun. This made things more instant and also it's fun to use. But admittedly, it was very messy with stringy pieces looming around after each application. But it's not as bad as I say, you just pick them off as you're going. Roll them around on your fingers into a little ball and you dispose of them. So it was a quick and swift assembly using the hot gun. And the main construction arguably was the quickest part out of the whole project. I would say to be careful with the glue gun as it gets hotter and hotter as it heats up naturally but in the end it comes out like hot lava. To begin with you feel oh this is fine and cools down very quickly but after some time it does get hotter and hotter so beware of that. I used a scrap of, of the foam X to scrape off the excess glue when I was doing bits because that will hinder you later on if you leave them on thinking you can just pick off big chunks. Um, might be a little bit more tricky, you have to snip them off. I didn't use a square while building it, but I'd advise that you do. It'd be beneficial if you're not so good at judging things with your eye. Uh, even I would have benefited from it, but it went together with no trouble. I was happy to eyeball it. For the road, I used Fomex in two pieces as my material was not long enough to make it. Um, I think it was about 30 centimetres and I needed, of course, 50 in total. So I added bits to each end to make up the full length. To add a slab style across the stones to the bridge, I cut down the 3mm Fomex into strips, into like 3mm and 2mm strips. To create the divisions, I used a knife to make an impression on three of the sides to show the slab form. With a gentle slice and a little pressure, you can achieve this. Just don't push too hard, otherwise you'll make lots of individual slabs that you have to stick on, which isn't so fun. You need to be patient, and it will look good. I made larger slabs at the top, closest to the road, which are half an inch apart, and then further down, I then did them with a quarter of an inch. This time, instead of using a messy glue gun, I used some tube-fed Yoohoo, which is their P.O.R. type. This doesn't make the well-known strong smell that you normally get used to Yoohoo and Bostic uh, adhesives. Dan from Tunnel Lane recommended this to me, and it's been a great help. It was nice to stick a load of things together without having all those whiffs of Yoohoo kind of in the air. Adding the cladding was a slow process, admittedly. I spent a lot of my time cutting through the wheel sheets, which are about 1.5 millimetres thick, well, this stone was anyway, which is quite tough. And it would be nice if they were thinner. I feel like they could be, but maybe there's a really good reason why they are thicker. But it's not three slices, it's not four. It feels like six to cut through it with a sharp Stanley blade, unless I need to toughen up and push a bit harder. I'm comparing it to the Slater sheets, which are much easier. <laughs> Just imagine you're using, you know, printed paper. You'd cut through it with scissors, much easier, much more fun. But the stone stuff will look really good once they're done. On the ends of the clad sheets, there were some moulding lines and bits that needed to be trimmed off. When joining one sheet to the next, 
I didn't want to have that division line from one sheet to another. You know, it would be so obvious what I've done there. So I decided to chamfer the edge. So I put a 45 degree angle on it um, on one side and then a matching angle on the other. Then put it together. But what I did do was where the two bits would join to sit against each other, I'd use some of Tamiya's poly cement glue and softened all that area off and kind of worked it with my finger once it was kind of touching and just moistened it with that, that cement, which kind of ended up blending it together to give that more of a seamless join. It wasn't perfect, but it actually was quite good. I've used embossed plastic from other companies abroad, which have the ability to have a continuous run. One end of the molding then mates with the other end, which means you could put like 10 meters together and you wouldn't be able to tell where the join is, which is brilliant. So hopefully, you know, Wills in the future, if they ever want to do some retooling, would think about doing something like that to make it nicer for the modeler and more fun for us. While doing this, I plan to make the arch edges, as I said before, with a brick pattern to match the style used at Beaudley. Even though this bridge isn't the same shape as the one that I've seen at Beaudley, I still like the way that the brick pattern is and I want to take some elements away from places just to give me that nicer feeling about the creation. So I went on CAD and I modelled them up. I measured the bricks that I already have so that I could scale them correctly and make sure the brick counts kind of the same on depth so this had four bricks deep. I printed them out on my Elegoo Mars Pro, which is a new machine that I've got. I've passed on my older machine and it's a good workhorse. I've washed them and let them go hard using the help of ultraviolet light. To fit them, I needed to be careful. So I traced around the inner arch of the wheel sheet when it was rested against the Fomex. So then I had the information of the arch. Then flipping it over, I put the arch edges on, marked around them, and then spent some time very carefully, because like I said before, this material is not the easiest to cut, and use a standing knife to score until I manage to cut through. Again, with Yuhu, I stuck it in place. What I did find though was the 3D printed material, it took longer for it to kind of go solid against the Fomex, whereas the other plastic seemed to adhere to it better. I, I could wiggle the, the arches a little bit, but it went dry, it went hard, and it was good. Once this front was done, I had thin strips of the cladding to glue onto the upper portion which would go on the insides next to the road. This was simple enough, but I found that I needed to use these low cost clamps to you know, hold them in place. These are from you know, a pound store. I do enjoy visiting, um, for example, Poundland or any of these companies um, because you pick up some uh, well, cheap super glue, you can pick up wood glues in small pots very handy modelers type materials for not a lot so that's always great with the thicker sheets now fitted we can now move over to the capping stones for the top of the bridge wall edges i purchased some one millimeter Fomex for this i marked it to make some impressions quarter of an inch apart across their lengths and made sure to do all three visible sides so they look more realistic this sheet had a sticky back so we could just attach it without glue. 
Dan Everson did say to me that he'd also pick some up. So I have the same stuff. Um, but what you will find is some of it might not stick down to what you're doing. So use some Yoohoo or whatever glue you want to, to to stick that down later on, just in case you don't want that falling off whilst you're painting. There is only the inner arch left to do now for the construction. So I opted for the Slater's plastic card, as I'd said about before. And it, for me, it was the only choice. The Slater's embossed brick sheet is a benefit for this is a thin and flexible material. And also it's very easy to cut. You could also use scissors if you wished. The sheet's flexibility means you can bend it and then place it into the arch and glue it down with the Yoohoo. It looks great so far and I'm excited about the painting. Don't know what you think, but the structure is now together and yeah, I think it's going to look good. For colour, I've gone down the route for a red colour of the rock, but I know that I also want that kind of stony colour that I've seen in so many scenarios. So I'll start with some more reddish colours in it and we'll see where we go with that. It will end up how it ends up. To paint it, I used the knowledge that Dan Everson kindly imparted to me on my visit over there. Check out my recent video of checking out Dan's fantastic workshop and what he gets up to. Using a range of colours from Hobbycraft and a big brush, I used an offcut of the wheel sheeting to test how it will look. It's a nice process as you don't have to be precise but you do need to be conscious of the shades that you're adding on, so the variance as you're going over it. You don't want it to all be yellow or brown or all red, so we mix them all up. Once that's done and you've splodged it round, and you will find this is a therapeutic process. After that, as it is acrylic and it has an absorbent nature, you need to seal it with some matte lacquer. This is what Dan showed me because when I've tried this in the past, you end up rubbing all the red into the mortar it just doesn't work out for you this means that we can then put some of the buff titanium from the same paint range and paste it over into all the gaps with a finger i ended up putting so much of this on because of the stone not being flat it can weld into areas so it took a bit of work wiping us off but it started to look really good straight away so i was very happy now i'm happy with how that looks i then chose to go down the route of painting everything and I've been really looking forward to this after doing that sample piece I just sent a picture to Dan and you know he said what do you think he said it looked good so off I went this didn't take too long doing all of this you just take your time in one sense but because you're splodging it on you don't have to stress too much about doing things particularly right and everything was going to get covered and anything I didn't want to have covered I can just paint it a different colour later so that's fine. I started working on the big main section first and working my way across and yeah did all the arch rays just everything and covered it over and yeah it's very enjoyable to do. With that done I then used the matte lacquer to spray over the top of it, seal it up and once that was dry, I let it go hard, so I then rub that off. I brought it inside, and then we used the buff titanium. And this took a lot of tissue um, when I was basically wiping it off. And that was fine, um, but what I realised with this stone, I started mixing a little bit of water with the buff titanium, so it ran into the crevices a bit better, a bit easier, and also it was easier to get a mop away. Um, but I didn't want to go too thin, otherwise you just taking up the bits that gone in the gap so you'll find your own way as you do this but it's also a very fun job to do
Now with all the mortar finished, I can move over to the road. And I've used some card from Hobbycraft called Dreadnought Grey. I was thinking, let's get some card and then paint it. But I found some card that was kind of a road colour. And then we can do something to give it less of a uniform colour all the way over. Afterwards, just marked out my width and simply cut it out. Nice and easy to work with. It's just thin card. I think it was £2 for this big sheet so I can keep it for other things in the future. If not, it will, I guess, end up on the shelf for a while. But it's been very useful in this case. So cutting that out, we can then deposit it into position. Some trimming was required to fit this in place, but it was nice and simple. Just using a knife to trim out areas that weren't needed, as well as adjusting the ends was the main thing. But I was very happy. I wanted to do this after painting because I didn't want to get any paint on the road which I'm sure you'll understand. Trimming off the excess on the end, just with a knife, slice it there, as well as the other one. And yeah, nice and easy job on this. But I don't want to leave it with that. Like I said, I want to go down that route of adding some dirt, let's say, from all the years it's been sitting there, grime coming off the banking, people with cars, horses and carriages, people walking on foot and lots of muddy days where the mud will kind of be tucking into the corners. Really I should be adding some little tufts of grass on the edges where little weeds would be growing in there but we can always do that on another day. I use some, some browns and black um, dirt and scrubbing into the corners. I'm very far um, from being any form of expert on weathering but having a go is the key bits if you're scared do it on something else to see what it will look like first. And if you don't like it, then you can choose to do something else. But using a mixture of makeup brushes and kind of soft bristled brushes, I was able to add in sections. I kind of didn't really know exactly what I was going for, but I wanted to just go with my instincts on this one and put something down. If it was truly dreadful, I can always put a new piece of card on and just paint it, put some washes in on the corners and go from there. But I thought with card, and some weathering, maybe that's enough, you know, give it that dirty look. With the road done, I wanted to add some smoke ash that would be coming up out of the arches as the loco either went in or out. I remember going down on the Peak District of the Montel Trail and you can see evidence from many years before of the ash on the inside of the tunnels or the portals as you go in as well as on the entrance you see bits what I've got here is possibly too much but I was going with how I felt at the time and I've added it in and I quite like it um, on the larger arch we'll have two bits for the two rails as it comes in and just using the makeup brushes these are just some cheap ones I bought a pack a little bit ago and yeah it kind of just blends it in nicely I did do too much on one little area and Dan was explaining when I was chatting to him um, you can just use a like a stiffer bristled brush to kind of blend bits in a bit more and you know knock out some of the intensity of it so I just enjoyed myself adding it in as I went
looking at it with the weathering on, I'm really pleased with it. I'm honestly quite surprised at how I feel it looks good. I wasn't really thinking it would turn out as nice as this, so I am pleased. So we go from this wonderful kit to this, which is a homemade kit, which I'm really pleased with. So what we'll do is we'll have a little look at some locos going through. Uh, it's kind of very satisfying to see something pass through it. I think that after this video I'll focus on covering the areas of the entrance so you can't see behind it. So not the entrance but the, the exit as it would be going through. We'll get that sorted and yeah, go from there. I think that the embankment would be next up behind it as it goes away and we can enjoy that. I would like to say a big thank you to everyone that's watched this video and got to this point. If you've got to this point, you must like this channel. I appreciate the viewers that leave comments. If you aren't confident to leave a comment, at least maybe if you did like it, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more, hit subscribe it's a nice thing to see when your subscriber views and likes and comments come through. It gives you motivation to do more videos. I also want to say a big thank you to my patrons and channel members who give me that bit of extra support. I like to put that all back into the channel and try and create better and better videos for all of you. If you do become a patron and channel member, you get to see the videos a few days early, uh, if, I, if I've managed to get it all sorted. Anyway, thank you as always. Please leave a comment and let me know what you thought. If there's anything I would benefit knowing, let me know. And if there's anything that you felt you benefited in from seeing this video, let me know as well. Anyway, as always, take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.